Hello, my name is Eli Davis, and this is a mini series on how you can use the Unity extension Record and Play inside of the program you are creating. This is the second part of a multi part series, so if you want to go back from the beginning and uh, understand the basics, I would suggest that. This video, we're going to be focusing on building a recording programmatically. So, in the last video, we looked at how you can create a recording through the editor. However, that probably won't satisfy most UK use cases of this application. So we're going to be talking about how you can start a recorder in code and run it and do all these custom events and set metadata and what all that means. Um, so with that, let's get started. I'm in an empty Unity project. This is 2018.3. Um, actually, before we get started, I meant to say this last video, but uh, for Record and Play to work nicely, um, you'll want to set your API compatibility level to uh, .NET 4X. I think this is like, I think most people have their project in this by now, um, but I just wanted to make that clear. I'm pretty sure even 2019, uh, they depreciated to, to point out. Anyway, um, so make sure you have that done for people not in 2019. Anyway, so we'll, we're in an empty Unity project. We have an empty scene. Um, every Everything, uh, is empty except for a the record and play plugin that's been imported and this very basic script that has nothing in it yet. So this game behavior script. So what we're going to be building in this video is a um, kind of play uh, recording builder that just records some cubes in the scene, uh, records what happens to them and then um, allows you to play that back. So to get started, to build a recording, first you'll need a recorder. So you'll need to import the recorder namespace. So we'll say using Ulysses Davis record and play record. And I'll just walk through the namespaces real quick since we, it's the first time seeing it. Um, IO is for if you want to take a recording and write it to some kind of stream, so like a file stream if you're writing to disk, or a network stream if you're transporting it over the wire. Um, so you can use the IO namespace for that. Playbacks for playback, record is for recording. Transport is for if you want to do protobuf stuff. I won't get into that in this video. That's probably going to just be in documentation. I might make a video later on that. And then there's util, you probably don't care about that at all. So, and then there's just the namespace record and play, which will contain stuff like the recording object and other helpers like that. So subject recording. Um, so we're gonna import record, and then we're going to create a variable called recorder. And we're going to instantiate this recorder and start. Now, something to note is that this recorder, if you look at it, is actually a scriptable object. So like mono behavior, scriptable objects can't have um, constructors, so we'll have to create it in a kind of weird way. Scriptable object .create instance. Um, and we, you don't ever have to pass anything to the recorder. All, all, all the job of the recorder is to do is to keep up with what uh, all the different subjects in the scene are doing pretty much. So there's really not much to configure with the recorder. Um, so we've created a recorder. Now we need um, subjects for it to record. So let's create ourselves some subjects. Uh, let's say we're gonna be making three subjects or something. And we'll just loop through. And so for each subject, we're going to create a cube. Um, so we can do game object. No, no. Create primitive and primitive type cube. We're going to give them some physics. So cube.add component rigid body. And I think. The rigid body defaults will do what we want to do. Also, we need to change the position. We're going to create multiple cubes, so we need to make sure the position is different for each one. So let's move it. Um, equals 
vector three dot, uh, we'll say new vector three, and we'll give it a x of i times two minus 3.5, 1.5, I think is what will get us there. I'm trying to, I'm trying to make it all centered around the zero. Um, ignore this, I guess. This is just me being pretty about it. So we're setting the position. And then finally, these cubes by themselves aren't going to be recorded. We have to actually set up a recorder for them. So we'll say subject behavior dot build. So if you remember the last video, anything that is to be recorded uh, needs subject behavior attached to them. Subject behavior, like the scriptable object, so subject behavior inherits from mono behavior, which means you can't use a constructor. So I added this helper function, which is build, and you can pass it all your stuff. So we're going to pass it the cube and then the recorder. So what what this is doing is the subject behavior is going to register itself to that recorder. So you don't have to do anything else um, for registering or ho hooking things up. The only time you have to manually register a subject with a recorder is if it was once previously um, registered with a recorder and then you cleared that. So what you can do, so let's say for example, a player is going through multiple like levels, and you want to keep recycling the same recorder. Um, you're gonna want to keep uh, clear all like say the enemies that the player has killed. So you're recording enemies. You're gonna clear them all out for the next recorder. Uh, but you want to keep the player. So one method you could do is you could say recorder dot clear subjects, which removes everything. But then you'll need to manually uh, re-add the player so you'll then say register and then you'll pass it that player recorder that you care about so that's the only time you have to manually register a subject with the recorder it should be taken care of by default with all this kind of stuff and how you hook it back up is kind of domain specific and you know up to you um, maybe you just want to create a whole new subject behavior uh, uh, script that's attached to the object because you can attach multiple so you can actually have multiple recordings running with different subjects subject behaviors configured with different metadata different names different um, frame rate captures and all that there's no reason you can't do that so it's all up to you on and your domain what what you need to do um, so anyway we've set up this recorder we've attached subjects to this recorder but that's still not going to record it uh, what we need to do now is actually start the recorder. Great. So we've created a recorder. We've decided what we want to record, and we're recording. But we need to be able to stop it, finish it, and then view the recording. So how you do that? Um, in this instance, uh, it's up to you. But f for sake of example or whatnot, I'm just going to use an on GUI kind of solution. So. Um, really cheap just for sake of example you know it's obviously be very specific to your uh, program you're running so we'll say GUI layout dot button this will just auto lay out a button for us so we don't really have to care about anything and we'll say save and what we're gonna do when we click save is we're gonna say recorder dot finish so we're gonna stop recording that's what finish does we're gonna stop recording and it's gonna return us um, a record uh, like the final recording result and what we're gonna do with that final recording result is we're gonna save it to assets and we'll just name and you have to provide a name what it's gonna save to assets and we're just gonna call it game behavior demo or something um, so let's see if that compiles hopefully it will play and do anything wrong Cool, that's very nice. So I'll attach it to the directional light because I'm cool like that. Love game behavior. I'll add a plane object for reference. Uh, we'll move it down a little too. 
And let's hit play. Let's see what happens. So cool. Three cubes drop. It looks like got the center right. And uh, they should be recording right now. You see the save button in the top left. And so our GUI's running. And then I can do whatever. Um, there it goes. Goodbye. And we'll just save this. And we'll unplay. And you see, oh, actually, it dots. I didn't know. <laughs> Whoops. Anyway, so that works still. And we can go and view the playback, hopefully. And we won't set custom actors. We'll set it to loop. And then there are boxes. And so if we go through and it keeps running, hopefully we'll see a box move and all that junk. Yep, there it goes, and should go off into the ether soon. Goodbye. Perfect. So we got a recording, and we can mess around. So that's pretty basic. And recording position rotation is nice. But you might want to do some other stuff. Like, let's say the player is shooting a gun. You might want to record that on shoot gun event so that you have a more better, more accurate playback. Or maybe there's some extra information happening in the scene that you want to keep up with. Um, you might want to record that as well. So what we're going to do is look into what logging custom events looks like and metadata. So this is all good, and we can probably just extend from this. What I'm going to set up is two things. One, I want to record whenever a box makes contact with the plane. So we can get these on collision events, logging, or whatnot. The second thing I'm going to do is keep up with the count of how many times it collides with the plane. So we can have this metadata information. So you don't even have to watch the recording. You can just look at the metadata of the recording and know, OK, in this recording, the box has collided 10 times. And I can then make a decision whether or not I want to watch the recording or not. So this is more for like data analytics or something. And you, we can go into how exporting works and looking at CSV files and JSON later. Um, anyway, so let's get an easy one out of the way, the on collision events. Uh, I'm not really going to explain the on collision stuff. I assume you're familiar with Unity. If not, there is plenty of documentation on how on collision works. So we have this collision going on and I think I don't remember the name I'll just set the name actually we'll say cube dot transform dot name box cool and so we'll say if on collision if the name the transform dot name is box and we're gonna log the event so there's like kind of two ways on how these custom event loggings happen. There's what I call the global custom events, which happen to the entire recording as a whole, which looks like this. Recorder dot capture custom event. And we'll say uh, box collision. And then we give it details. So you name the event and you give it details. Um, and so I'll just give the details of the um, position the box is in when it collided. So zero, so this is just a C sharp string format tool. And we'll say um, transform, collision dot, is there a point? There should be, ah, we can do it where the, the box is. That'll, that'll probably make it better. No, we'll do the point. Um, contact count, contacts. I'm assuming there has to be at least one contact dot. Ah, there's the point dot x. Wow, that is so long. They just get the contact point, but I get it. X, Y, Z, or Z for foreign audiences. Or audiences not in the US. Cool. So this global event is occurring to the recording as a whole. There is another way I can capture this custom event. 
is if I referenced the subject behavior specifically, so I could say, um, if I had a reference to this, which I'm not keeping up with because I'm lazy right now, I could say capture custom event. I could do the same thing. And now this is more important for playback, but when, when things are being played back, it uh, the appropriate uh, event handler is going to be called um, based on whether or not it's global or to a specific subject. And we can get into that later on another video. Anyway, we're going to make these global custom events. Um, and then another thing we want to do, we're going to keep up with collision count, right? So this is going to be real simple. We're just going to increment this every time a collision happens. And then we're going to keep up with the metadata of how many times this collision happens. So we'll say recorder that um, set metadata. And we have, and so when you set metadata, it's basically just a dictionary, a key value pair. Um, so like, um, it, you, it's it's sort of like the custom event stuff where you set a name and details. We're gonna set a key and then information. And so I'm just gonna update this key, and this key is going to be um, collision count, and we're gonna set it to collision count. Cool. So now anytime uh, we have a collision, we're going to capture that custom event, we're going to update the collision count, and then we're going to reset this key in the metadata. So this will always be updating and whatnot. And I think that's it, honestly. We will recompile. Hopefully, cool, cool. Um, and we need to actually attach this script to the plane now because that's how we're gonna get the on collision events. So we'll attach it here and then we'll hit play and hopefully things are still working. Oop, and we'll, I think three on collision events just happened. Let's see if a fourth one happens and maybe five and we'll hit save. And we'll unplay. And notice what um, this does. When you save the assets the same name multiple times, it will automatically start to append a number. So if I saved it again, it'll be uh, game behavior demo dot 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 two, and then dot 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 three, and so forth. So if you try to save assets with the same name, it's gonna auto increment. Cool, so you actually see custom events is five. Um, and our collision count is five. That means we're logging everything properly. And yeah, that looks pretty good. So if we view playback, you know, it'll be pretty basic. We'll see the cubes drop up and down. Um, but now you have an idea of these collision, or this, what metadata is. You have an idea of what these custom events are. And in the next video, we'll get into how do I use this metadata and collision events to, you know, build a really cool playback or whatnot so that you can see your recording. Um, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.